focus on this theme of a deeper experience. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray for this deeper experience. Make it clear for us to understand and make us willing to have the experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, our message today is entitled, A Friend in need is a friend indeed. Sounds obvious, because it is obvious that a friend in need is what kind of friend? Is a friend indeed. A friend in need is a friend indeed. This is how to tell true friends from fake friends and opportunistic friends. And the advice we are given is that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Until you are in need, you cannot tell who your friends truly are. A friend of mine sent me one of these fan forwards we receive on social media, and it was saying that, dear ladies, this is free advice on whether to tell if a man is serious in a relationship with you. And so I was interested, though I'm not a lady, but I was interested, are we together? <laughs> and so I kept reading and it said that if a man shows any interest in you, even if you say you are married, they won't go away. They will hang on you. Until you say you, you seriously need money for some project, and they will go one way. <laughs> so going around saying, oh, I'm married for so many years, and I really love my husband, leave me alone, that doesn't work. According to that forward, are we together? According to that forward, that will not work. These men are hyenas. They are persistent. <laughs> and so the only way is to focus their attention on their wallet. <laughs> and say, yeah, I think, I think I'm also liking you, but I have a problem you need to solve before we continue. I just need a small amount of money, 50,000 only, to solve something, <laughs> then we talk. Please deal with this, then we continue talking, and the man will go one way. Are we together? Because a friend 
in need is a friend what? Indeed. Now, don't ask for that kind of money if the person is one of the corrupt public officials. Are we together? You ask for something bigger, like one billion shillings, if it's a corrupt person. Are we together? But if it's these ordinary mortals, you just adjust the figure slightly above their heads. Are we together? This is where, sisters, you should be saying amen. Can I hear sisters saying amen? Can I hear the sisters saying amen? amen? A friend in need is a friend what? Indeed. The experience of need on your side will define who is your friend. Whoever can go with you through the experience of need is a true friend. When you are in need, it is an experience you go through. And that's why we say a friend in need is a friend indeed. A time of need is a time of our helplessness. A time we need support and help. A time when we have reached the end of our abilities. A time of need is a time of desperation and panic. A time of need is a time of shame and disappointment. A time of need is a time of fear and worry. In time of need, we go through a horrific experience. And whoever can go with us through that horrific experience and support us and provide for us and save us, that one is a true friend. When you have no money to buy food, and you send a message to all your uncles, and all of a sudden, all of them cannot be reached. The mobile subscriber cannot be reached. A time of need, a time when you are in need, a time when you are desperate, whoever can go with you through that experience is a true friend. When it is your last semester and you just need this amount to write exam and be done with the school, this one last time, you can even give me the money as a debt. I will pay afterwards. A friend in need is a friend indeed. When you are hungry, without food and desperate, a friend in need is a friend indeed. When you are lonely, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Therefore, while the time of need is not a desirable experience, it gives us a deeper experience with our true friend, Jesus Christ. Let me repeat, because normal people will react a certain way when they hear such things. Are we together? That therefore, while the time of need is not a desirable experience, it gives us a deeper experience with our true friend, Jesus Christ. That while the time of need is not desirable, we don't desire to be in need. We don't desire to be broke. We don't desire to be sick. We don't desire to go through rejection and frustration. We don't desire these bad experiences, but we want to take note today that it is a God opportunity for us to experience the true friendship of Jesus Christ. 
And so, brothers and sisters, when bad time comes and crisis comes and difficulty comes, it is an opportunity for the true friend to remain standing. After all friends sit down and disappear, you discover one friend standing on your side, Jesus Christ. What does the church say? In Psalm 23 verse 4, this is the testimony of David after many years with this friend. And he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know a friend who can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what does he say? I will do what? I will fear no evil because you are with me. You are rod and your staff, they comfort me. David is not saying this as a recited statement or memory verse given to a pathfinder. No. David experienced God when lions and bears attacked the sheep that he was taking care of. And that's why he told King Saul, the same God who saved me from the paw of the lion and the bear will save me from Goliath. Because David had an experience with God when lions and bears attacked. David experienced God when Goliath threatened and everyone was afraid and he went without any armor only five stones and a sling and a stick and the giant died not because of David but because of a true friend who accompanied David. David experienced him when King Saul turned against David and sought to kill him and David ran for his life for seven years in the wilderness and so many times King Saul almost killed him. But God stood by David. David experienced him when his son Absalom turned against David and wanted to kill his father. And David discovered that God is a friend in need and therefore God is a friend indeed. When David sinned against God, committed adultery, and committed murder, and everyone was gossiping, and nobody was approaching him, God, through a prophet, went to David and said, I know guilt is finishing you. Let's deal with it. When he was laden with guilt, the only person who lifted his guilt and forgave his sin was God, not even the people who stood around him. And now David can stand and tell people, listen, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know a true friend who will never leave me. A friend in need is a friend indeed. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 21 and 22, Daniel has been thrown in the lion's den. And the king comes in the morning and says, Oh, Daniel, are you still there? And Daniel said to the king, verse 21, Daniel chapter 6, Oh, king, live forever, verse 22. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me. Because I was found innocent before him, and also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Maybe you may not understand, but let me help you. At this point in history, David was a very close friend to the king. Uh... I know you don't understand what that means, but David was a, Daniel was a very close friend to the king. Daniel, Daniel was a very close friend to the king. 
Actually, the Bible says when, when the king allowed Daniel to be thrown in that den is because the king had no option because of the rules of the land. And the king did not sleep at night because his friend was in the lion's den. Still, you may not have gotten it, but what I'm saying is that the king, the most powerful person in the kingdom, was the friend of a man in a lion's den. The king could not save Daniel. Some of you try to befriend powerful people like presidents, governors, members of parliament, politicians, and myself. But you discover, brethren, you will discover that the true friend is not us whose friendship you are seeking. The true friendship you need is the friendship of God. Some of you are sent with letters from politicians. Go to the university and register. I will send the money. You reach here and the number which has been working all along, the number you are calling is out of service. In fact, they almost add and say, it has never worked. Don't call again. And you discover all of a sudden that human beings, however powerful they are, they are not greater than God, our true friend. Daniel had a friend who was not assistant king. No. He was not deputy king. No. He was the king, the king himself. But his hands were tied to save his friend, Daniel. That's why I've come to tell you, brothers and sisters, don't put your faith even in kings. Don't put your faith in powerful people. Oh, my uncle is up there. Oh, my auntie is very powerful. Oh, let me tell you, a time comes when they will supervise you are going into the lion's den and they can't do anything. Listen, brothers and sisters, we need a deeper experience with the true friend and not with the powerful friends and powerful relatives. We must shift our faith from the powerful to the almighty God. Around these corrupt countries, you tend to get a lot around your way when you know people in power. But I want to tell you, brethren, that no God who is almighty. He can do things that the most powerful cannot do. A friend in need is a friend what? David dis Daniel discovered that while the king is my friend, he approved my going into the den. <laughs> while the king is my true friend and didn't even sleep, he is the one who sealed the mouth of the den where I was inside with the lions. And it became clear to Daniel who is the true friend. And God stood out when all people behaved like bad friends except the king. God wanted David to know, Daniel to know, that even the king is not a true friend. In Mark chapter 4, verse 38 to 41. Mark chapter 4 verse 38 to 41. The disciples are with Jesus in the lake. And Jesus is sleeping, but there is a storm. Verse 38 says Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke Jesus and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are doing what? We are perishing. Then he, Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Praise the Lord. But he said to them, Jesus said to them, 
Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no what? You have no faith. Let's continue. Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly. And they said to one another, Who can this be? The question we would have asked them is, Who did you get into the boat with? Because it's like they're saying, no, 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 no. We thought we know this man, but now we need a new introduction. Who can this be? What are we saying, brothers and sisters? When you go through a storm and you call on Jesus, you will understand Jesus in a way that you would never have understood before the storm. Because when Jesus arises and calms the storm, you discover that Jesus is more than the friends you have been depending on. The disciples found themselves in a deeper experience that they were now fearful and told themselves, we thought he's just the son of Joseph. We thought he's just a good teacher. But brethren, who is this? The reaction of disciples after Jesus calmed the storm tells us that the depth of their experience changed from deep to deeper. They knew Jesus. They got into the boat with Jesus. That was a deep experience. But when the storm came and they called on Jesus, they moved from a deep experience to a deeper experience because the storm accorded the opportunity for a deeper experience. But let me help you understand the other side. As long as Jesus was sleeping and nobody woke him up, the storm continued threatening. Brothers and sisters, many of us are in a storm and have not called on Jesus. When you go through the storm and you call on Jesus, you get a deeper experience. But when you go through a storm and you only call witch doctors, you will never get a deeper experience with Jesus. When you go through a storm and you only call friends, relatives and cry and publish it on social media, you will not get a deeper experience with Jesus until you call on Jesus during the time of your storm. The Bible says in Psalm 46 verse 1 that God is our refuge and strength. But I want you to take note of the words that follow. An ever-present help in trouble. God has a residence in trouble. So that when you come by, he is in trouble to save you. He has built a station in trouble so that when you come by, you find him in trouble. When fire was heated seven times for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Bible says that God is an ever-present in trouble. He was in the fire waiting. And when they got in the fire, in trouble, they discovered the truth of these words, an ever-present help in trouble. So, brothers and sisters, are you in trouble? In that trouble, God has a station to rescue us. In trouble of brokenness, God has a station, call on him. An ever-present help, not at the gate of trouble, not at the outskirts of trouble, the Bible says, in trouble. 
So when you are in trouble, you are not alone because he is an ever-present help in trouble. So while in trouble, call Jesus who stays in trouble to save people from that trouble. And so when I'm in trouble, I know I'm not alone. Praise the Lord. There is a friend in trouble who is a friend indeed. Because a friend in need, a friend in trouble, a friend in need, a friend in trouble, a friend in need, a friend in trouble is a friend indeed. And the Bible says of God, he is an ever-present help in need in trouble. There is no situation so desperate that God is not in it to save people. Are you laden in guilt and shame? Are you laden with sin? What is your trouble? Loneliness, desperation, you feel that prayers are not going anywhere. There is a friend in trouble, in need, in desperation, and he is a friend indeed. That's why we have just come to declare today that a friend in need is what kind of friend? A friend indeed. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. In these you rejoice, though now for a little while. In this you rejoice, even though now for a little while. If need be, you have been grieved by various kinds of what? Trials, troubles, and needs, verse 7. That the genuineness of your faith, that your experience with God may be deeper. Being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by trouble, by need, by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, our true friend. What does the church say? Whatever need we find ourselves in today, is an opportunity for a deeper experience with God. When in need, look only unto God and experience him as a friend in need who is a friend indeed. So brothers and sisters, what a friend we have in who? And so brothers and sisters, what a friend we have in who? In Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to who? To God in prayer. What a friend we have in who? In Jesus. Today, there could be somebody who is in need. And you need a friend who can be with you in need. I would like us to pray together today that whatever need you are in, may you find God to be a friend indeed. Did you get what I said? That whatever need I may be in, may I find God to be a friend what? Indeed, in my need. That in whatever trouble I'm going through, may I find God to be a friend indeed. And so I will ask you, friends, if it is not too much, that find a prayer partner. Find one prayer partner. And don't ask for the prayer request. Just ask their name. And say, dear God, whatever need Adam's has, May you be a friend indeed in his need. That's the prayer I want you to pray for each other. And then I will offer 
a closing prayer. Find somebody and just make that prayer. Get to know their name, mention their name to God, and say, God, whatever need this individual has today, may you be a friend in what? Indeed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a friend indeed. Today we come before you in various needs. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we may have the faith to call you in a time of trouble. And today your children have gone into groups of two, two, and they have called you because of the trouble that they are going through. Our prayer, dear Heavenly Father, is may you be a friend indeed who stands up to save us all the way the rest of our lives. As we leave this place today, may we remember that only Jesus is a friend indeed. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.